All right, let's start the webinar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the EdSys webinar on academic presentation 2022. I am Lutfia, will be the moderator for this session. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this presentation is enriching English knowledge by enhancing vocabulary. And there will be eight presenters who are going to talk about interesting topics related to the theme. And before starting the presentation, I'd like to read the re regulations for this webinar 2022. The first, this webinar will last for about one hour and a half. Second, the only language used to communicate is English. Third, all participants are suggested to take notes during the presentation. Fourth, all participants must turn off the audio or a microphone during the presentation. Fifth, the presentation will be held for maximum 10 minutes for each presenter. And then the moderator will set the time to remind the presenter. Then the Q&A session will come after the whole presentation. Uh, next, questions can be typed in the chat box since the early presentation. And then anyone interested in talking directly to the presenters is pleased to raise your hand and we will facilitate you if we still have time. And lastly, if you could not get your answer because of limited times, uh, the presenters will send the answer through your email. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Let's begin the presentation with the first presenter. The first presenter is Hasna Ismatullah with the presentation entitled 5R of Human Memory, Middle School Strategy Using Daily Conversation. Hasna, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, are you ready, Hasna? Yes, I'm ready. All right, then please start your presentation. All right, uh, let me share my screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, everyone, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to uh, thank you for attending this session and thank to moderator for hosting the meeting and give me opportunity. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Hasna Ismatullah. In this occasion, I would like to bring a topic about vocabulary learning. And the title of my presentation is Five R of Human Memory, Middle School Strategy Using Daily Conversation. And uh, I, I would divide in uh, the, pre the presentation into three sections. The first is uh, introduction, the second is body, uh, the third is conclusion. Uh, and or let's, do, let's move to the second slide. Before we go to the main topic, do you know what is 5R human memory? No. So yeah, five R of human memory are relay, repeat, retry, free work, and read. Talking with children and purposefully integrating new word in daily conversation can help build uh, children's vocabulary. According to Dickinson, Galinkov, and Hirspes, uh, 2010, research suggests that providing opportunities for children to talk and use language in meaningful context can promote vocabulary development in preschoolers. Although promoting a uh, conversation in classroom can increase children's of use of language, uh, we suggest that to develop uh, children's vocabulary, teachers need to engage children in purposeful strategic conversation that focus on the explicit development of vocabulary words and help children. So in this uh, presentation, I, I would divide into two session. The first is talk about five are human memory. And the second is talk about daily conversation in class, uh, daily conversation activity in classroom. And yeah, the for the first uh, R is relate. According to Libby Banks, 1970, science recognition performance depends both on memory and on the contraction of the test list, a parameter besides a is necessary to relate memory to performance. 
Uh, that means that being in contents touch with other things can enhance and connect our memories. It makes uh, it it makes uh, them much memorable. For example, uh, the word glass uh, that's similar with glass in Bahasa or the word activity that's similar with activitas in, bah in Bahasa. Uh, when we uh, link, uh, when we link word, to uh to to what what we already know it really helped us to remembering things and uh for the keyword here uh the keyword method we can link a word in our native language and imagine a picture and the second r is uh, repeat a little bit of repetition is enough to stop this deep forgetting sir so every time you repeat something uh the the longer you to forget it. So if we uh, if we want to memorize something or some information, we uh, uh, we should uh, repeat, repeat, and repeat. Uh, for example, when you often repeat and remember some vocab that you have memorized, try to pronounce it again. Uh, uh, you uh, you don't uh, only uh, stuck in uh, that word, but you you should repeat. Uh, that word uh, uh, because if you don't uh, repeat something you uh, because if you don't repeat something that you uh, it's make uh, very quickly you to forget and the third R is the tribe uh, the research show that doing something called active recall uh, in this tribe it's like uh, same is is it's little bit same with uh, relate, but uh, in this tribe, not imagine a picture. In this tribe, it is only remembering, uh, just remembering uh, the word uh, that have uh, you uh, memorized before. Uh, and that uh, active recall help help uh, help us to to uh, remember things more compared to just repeating them. For example, when you forget the word, uh, you you remember, uh, oh, how do you say that word? And you try, being, you, uh, try to bring into your mind that's called active recall. And the, the fourth uh, R is rework. After we, uh, after we know about relate, repeat, retry, another thing to keep in mind uh, is rework. Uh, because uh, with rework, we can uh continue the our knowledge or our uh information that we have learned before or have memorized before for example students are directed to read a story with new words uh, or by writing a sentence with new words that students have learned uh for another example uh, when we uh have give given the the uh, new vocabulary to student we can ask to the student for uh, make like make the sense sentence and then uh, or uh, continue the the story and uh, the last R is read our memories work is keeping so keeping so many words and if you are able to remembering it reading is uh, one type of a best skill uh, uh, because uh, memory help us to remember many words by reading uh, we can uh, get so much information and uh, knowledge and if you have information uh, then you can do that what you really want to do uh, it's uh, a little bit same with uh, rework but uh, in this read uh, the main point is reading something and this is a classroom activity daily conversation uh, and and I have give the uh, example for conversation. It's about holiday, and uh, in this uh, activity, we can uh, instruct uh, give instruction to the student for uh, for read the dialogue that has been provided, and uh, we can uh, ask to student to to student for find word that uh, they really see and don't know the meaning of and find the meaning. 
and uh, we can uh, ask them for memorize and try to make sentence from the word. And in this con in this conversation, I have uh, give the text the bold text. Uh, we can make it easier for student for finding finding the, the the unfamiliar vocab. And yeah, this is my conclusion for uh, this presentation today. Five R of human memory to further improve student memori memorization vocabulary in conversation, including re relate, repeat, retry, free work, and read. Uh, because there is quote from Guy de Maupassant: "Our memory is more perfect word than the universe. It gives back to give life to those who no longer exist." And this is my references. Uh, and thank you for your attention. Uh, sorry if I have missed if any finally. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will give it back to moderator. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. What an insightful presentation. Thank you very much, Hasna. Uh, now let's move to the second presenter. Sharifatul Awaliyah will deliver the presentation entitled Learning Vocabulary Using Mnemonics. Sharifatul, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, please start your presentation. All right. Thanks, moderator, for hosting the meeting today and uh, giving me the opportunity. Let me introduce myself. My name is Sharika Tolawalia, and my today's topic is learning vocabulary using mnemonics. This talk has three major sections. The first is definition of vocabulary and mnemonics. The second is the example of mnemonics. And the last is conclusion. Let's move on to the first section is definition of vocabulary. As we know, vocabulary is an important thing that must be mastered by everyone. Vocabulary is also very important because vocabulary support all other language skills. Like uh, according to uh, Alemi and Tayabi, 2011 said that vocabulary is a basic component of language proficiency, which provide the basis for learner performance in other skills, such as speaking, reading, listening, and writing. And also, David Wilkins, 90, uh, 90, 97, I'm sorry, uh, 1972, said that without grammar, very little can be conveyed. Without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed. It means that vocabulary is very important to learn because uh, by learning vocabulary can make it easier for us to uh, understand many things. And here, the definition of mnemonics. The word mnemonics is derived from the Greek the, from the Greek word mnemosyne, referring to the ancient Greek gods of memory, according to Amir Yusefi, 2011. Uh, this mnemonic is a technique that can be used to make it easier for us uh, to remember. Simply put, mnemonics uh, are formula or expression to help and remember new vocabulary that has been learned. And according to Salsa, 1995, as I did and in Amir Yusufi 2011, said that mnemonics are techniques or device, either verbal or visual in nature, that serve to improve the storage of new information and the recall of information contained in the memory. It means that mnemonics technique are device uh, that can be used to make it easier for us to learn your vocabulary. We can uh, collect several words and then uh, I mean, we can collect several words in one area that we want to learn and, uh, and then use this mnemonic technique to learn about the vocabulary. And yeah, I, now let's move on to the second uh, section is the example of mnemonics. Here I put uh, the order of taxonomy. In science, species are organized under a number of categories like kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. To make it easier for us to learn vocabulary in taxonomy order, the following sentence is often used. Kids prefer cheese over fried green spinach. 
the first letter from uh, each word from, uh, from each word represent for the uh, category. The first letter from kids, it's K represent for kingdom. The first letter from prefer, it's P represent for phylum. The first letter from cheese, it's C represent for class. The first letter from over, it's O represent for uh, order. The first letter from fight, it's F represent for family. The first letter from green, it's G represent for genus. And the first letter from spinach, it's S represent for, for species. Here you can uh, make your sentence using your own word, your own word to make it easier for you to remember uh, every word you want to learn. And in addition, uh, with make uh, with make sentence using your own word, uh, you can uh, enrich your, your vocabulary. And here I put uh, the other example of order of math operation. When working out equation, there's an order uh, of of operation to follow, like parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. The learning vocabulary of math operation can write in one word or in one sentence. The example of uh, in one word, it's the example, it's PEMDAS. P here represent for parentheses, E here represent for exponent, M here represent for multi, multi, multiplication, D here represent for division, a here represent for addition and S represent for subtraction. And this is uh, the example of in one sentence. Same as like the previous. Uh, the first letter from each word is represent for the category. Uh, the first letter from please, it's P represent for parentheses. The first letter from excuse, it's E represent, represent for exponent. The first letter from my, it's M represent for multiplication. The first letter from there, it's D represent for division. The first letter from on, it's A represent for addition. And the first letter from Sally, it's S represent for subtraction. And now let's move on to the last section, it's conclusion. Mnemonics is one of the techniques that we can use to learn vocabulary. This technique is especially useful for learn vocabulary in a, part, in a particular field. Teacher can use this mnemonic technique to make it easier for students to learn new vocabulary. In addition to making sentence in their own word, students can easily remember new vocabulary in achieving the target vocabulary. And according to George, 1997, mnemonics device can be very effective and can make the student motivated and the classroom more interesting. And this is my references. So I think this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will give it back to moderator. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. That was a very wonderful presentation. Thank you very much, Sharifatul. And now time for the third speaker, Ria Angelia, who will carry out the presentation entitled Four Equal Integrated Strands. Ria, are you there? Yes, I'm in. All right, please start your presentation whenever you're ready, Ria. All right, let me share my screen. All right. Uh, Thank you for moderator for hosting this meeting. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending this session. Uh, before we go to the topic, let me introduce myself. My name is Riangelia. I'm from English Education Department, Siliwang University. I'd like to bring a topic about for equal integrated strengths. And I divide my presentation into three sections, namely introduction, body, and conclusion. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce table of contents of my presentation. First, overview. Second, meaning focus input. Third, meaning focus output. Fourth, language focus learning. Fifth, uh, fluency development. And last or sixth is conclusion. In Asian seminar work, the four strands in 2007, 
He advocates that the process of learning and ultimately retaining vocabulary should form part of an integrated four-tiered approach in which all parts of the vital to ensure the success of the same. This teaching strategy consists on focusing on four components, meaning focus input, meaning focus output, language focus learning, and fluency development. Uh, first, meaning focus input, listening and reading. The meaning focus input strand involves learning through listening and reading. This is largely incidental learning because the learner's attention should be focused on comprehending what is being read or listened to. Uh, the activities of meaning focus input are reading graded readers containing some unfamiliar words, listening to a recorded story, listening to lessons on podcast, is changing emails with language exchange partners, and browsing the internet in the target language. Uh, in this trend, uh, the, learner, the main concern of the learner is to uh, understand what they have read or listened to and uh, gain uh, knowledge from this. The second is meaning focus output, speaking and writing. The meaning focus output strand involves uh, learning through speaking and writing. Learners should talk and write about what they have read. The activities of meaning focus output are keeping a diary and doing free writing. Uh, when students speak or write, uh, they use uh, language uh, productively. And the main concern of the learner is to convey a message to someone, uh, such as uh, taking part in a conversation, uh, keeping a diary, uh, telling a story, or instructing someone how to do something. Third, uh, language focus learning, or we can call it deliberate learning. The language focus learning strand involves a deliberate attention to language features, in this case, vocabulary. The activities of language focus learning are learning from a language textbook using a grammar reference book and consulting a dictionary and praise book. Uh, in this case, uh, the learner uh, uh, gives deliberate attention to language features, in this case, vocabulary. According to Nation, uh, this deliberate learning can contribute uh, to learners' language uh, proficiency. And the last or the fourth is fluency development. The fourth strand of a well-balanced course is a fluency development strand, which aims at helping the learners make the best use of what is already known. The activities of fluency development are speaking and writing using a praise book, doing repetitive exercises, listening to a recorded story, and repeating a recorded story or a movie. Uh, in fact, in it was nation in 1989, who made uh, the popular 432 technique, uh, where the learners have to repeat uh, some uh, unrehearsed talk for four minutes, and then three minutes, and the last is two minutes in front of different classmates. According to him, the benefits are uh, an increase in uh, learners' fluency, grammar, grammar accuracy, and control of content. And this is the conclusion of my presentation today. The general idea that lies behind the fourth strands principle is that there is no one easy answer to language learning. Learning from input alone is not enough. Intensive deliberate learning by itself is not enough. There needs to be a balance of well-proven learning activities across the four strands. And these are the references that I use for my presentation today. And this is the end of my presentation. Sorry if I made a lot of mistakes during a presentation. That's all from me. Thank you. And I'll give back to the moderator. All right. Thank you very much, Ria. Uh, new knowledge has been added. And before we move to the next presenter, I'm going to remind our participants, if you have any question, please just drop it into the chat box and the presenters will answer your questions in the Q&A session later. All right, now uh, let's move to the fourth presenters, Ristia Iknawanti with the presentation entitled Measuring Learner Vocabulary Size. Ristia, are you there? Yes, here I am. All right, Ristia, please, you can start your presentation. All right, let me share my screen. Mm. Can you see the screen? It's still loading. How about now? Can you see the screen? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, thanks to the moderator for hosting the meeting and thanks to the audience for attending this webinar. My name is Ristia Iknawanti and my topic today is measuring learners' vocabulary size. And in this presentation, I have for me your presentation. The first is definition of vocabulary and vocabulary size. The second is why it is important to measure students' vocabulary size. The third is how to test vocabulary size. And the last one is conclusion. First of all, we have to know the definition of vocabulary and vocabulary size. And you have to know the reason why it is important to measure students' vocabulary size. Definition of vocabulary size. Vocabulary is a total number of words. It is according to Campillo 2015. Vocabulary is a set of lexemes that can be in the form of single words, compound words, or uh, idiom. It is according to Richard 2010. And the definition of vocabulary Vocabulary size is vocabulary is a critical in achieving reasonable proficiency in the use of the language. It is according to Nation and Anthony 2016. It means that vocabulary is a set of words uh, that are on or uh, that are on by person or vocabulary is a part of a particular language. And why it is important to measure students' vocabulary size. According to Nation and Anthony 2016, measuring the vocabulary size of second or foreign language learners, it can help, it can help, it can help teachers to determine the learners uh, at the current level of English proficiency. And it can evaluate and select appropriate teaching reading materials and provide focus and provide focus uh, and provide focus vocabulary training at the correct level. And according to according to Kurniawan 2016, measuring learners vocabulary size is to know how effective our teaching is. So uh, it means that uh, uh, teaching vocabulary size or measuring learners vocabulary size is a really important thing because uh, with uh, measuring learners vocabulary size, we can know how effective our teaching is. And without a test, we never know uh, the progress of our students in acquiring English vocabulary. So it can show the students progress and motivation by measuring learners vocabulary size. All right. Uh, let's move to the next slide. Okay, he, here I would like to explain about how to test vocabulary sites. Uh, according to Nation 2013, uh, in measuring learners vocabulary sites, we have uh, we we have two methodology to measure vocabulary sites. The first one is dictionary based sampling, and the second one is frequency based sampling. The first one is dictionary based sampling. Dictionary based sampling in this kind of method relies on the dictionary, and the steps are follows the researchers find out how many words that, that are in the dictionary. And then the sample of this word was determined. So the ratio between the sample and the number of words in the dictionary is known. For example, uh, a, a student knows 30 from 100 words, randomly selected 30%, and there are 10,000 head words in the dictionary. So a rough estimation of students' vocabulary size is 30% of a 10,000 or 3,000 uh, words and frequency best sampling. In this frequency best sampling or dictionary best sampling is commonly used to take estimate native speakers vocabulary, but, but whereas for EFL learners, frequency best sampling is normally employed. For example, there are 100 words that are letter chosen randomly from, from the list to be item in the test. If a student can choose the correct answer of 60 from 100 and then mul multiply it to, to, to 2000, and then they will get a score of 1200. It means the student's vocabulary size is 1200 words. All right, and here I have uh, and here I have some steps that must be considered to make the design vocabulary size test. The first is the test user must decide the goal of the test. Uh, the test user 
can use uh, to measure vocabulary uh, to a first language or a second language. And the test measure is written in receptive vocabulary knowledge. And the second is the test user must prepare the test specification, which is sampling words for the item. And the third is the stem of the test has four multiple choice uh, and followed by an undefining sentence that includes the word in it. And the test taker must choose the translation of a word in four option in their first language, which is our first language is Indonesian. For example, number one is soldier. John is a soldier. What is the meaning uh, of the soldier? Is the meaning of soldier in Indonesia is siswa, tukang sol sepatu, prajurit or a businessman. So the, take, the test takers must choose one of them uh, and choose the meaning of soldier. And the last one is the order of the test should be mixed at all levels of the word frequency and avoid ranging frequency order. All right, and here I have uh, the website recommendation for test vocabulary size. And in this website, you can visit directly in Google Chrome or, and you can visit in this website uh, without any trouble. And, and then you can set, and you can directly test your vocabulary size without having to design a vocabulary size test. And you can see an example of this website, an example uh, how the test look likes and how, the final result look like. All right, uh, from this presentation, uh, we, have, we can conclude that measuring learners' vocabulary is very important thing because with measuring learners' vocabulary, we can find out how effective our teaching to our students and measuring learners' vocabulary, it can help teacher to determine the learner's current level of English proficiency. And measuring learners' vocabulary size is can evaluate and select appropriate teaching and reading materials. And it is can provide focused vocabulary training at the correct level. And here is my references. Uh, so I think that's enough from me. I'm sorry for all of my mistakes. Thank you for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will give it back to the moderator. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It was a very clear explanation. Thank you very much, Ristia. Thank you very much, Ristia. Now we move to the fifth presenter, Nisa Soliha, who will deliver the presentation entitled Vocabulary Reinforcement Using the Melody of Song. Nisa, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. If you're ready, then please. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thanks, moderator, for hosting the meeting and giving me the opportunity. Uh, this thing is ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending EDSA webinar on Academic 2022. Let me introduce myself. My name is Nisa Soliha. Uh, on this occasion, I'd like to bring a topic about vocabulary by the title uh, Reinforcing Vocabulary Using a Melody of Songs for Children. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, all right. Shan, 2009, uh, state that songs, music, and lyrics have many benefits for children in getting to know English. Songs in English create a pleasant atmosphere for children through melody or music. Children get fun learning. Then, when children are introduced, to songs with foreign language lyrics, they'll be indirectly recognized foreign words English. Usually, children's songs can be sung while playing or other activities because it is considered a game. Children will be motivated to listen, learn, and pronounce it. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please.
Now we're going to know the definitions, okay? The first the uh, definitions is definitions of vocabulary. There are some definitions of vocabulary according to some experts. We since 2009 said that vocabulary is the collection of words that an individual knows. And the other expert, Newman and Dowger, 2011, said that vocabulary can be defined as the word someone must know to communicate effectively. Uh, Word in speaking or uh, expressive vocabulary and word in listening uh, receptive vocabulary. While the last is Hermy 2000 defined vocabulary as all the word that a person knows or uses when they are talking about particular subject in particular language. And from those definitions about vocabulary that I mentioned before, uh, it can be said that vocabulary is the basic element of language uh, of language which someone needs in learning a language especially to communicate effectively with others and the next definition is about melody according to Barclay 2020 uh, the two basic elements of music that define melody are pitch and rhythm melody is a section of pitches in rhythm the melody is usually the most memorable aspect of a song, the one of the listener remembers and is able to perform. Then the melody can be easily remembered for listener for for listeners. With this, uh, the vocabulary will be remembered by children more quickly and will be more effectively. Next slide, please. Okay, here are the benefit side of using a melody of songs. According to Ida Vera Sofia, 2013, there are many advantages to using melody of songs as a learning resource. And the advantage, the first is, a uh, melody of song is a linguistic resource. In this case, songs are medium for introducing new language, as well as medium for strengthening grammar and vocabulary. Also, allows natural and quantifications of language can be used to develop language skill integrally, including improving children's English skill and especially pronunciation. And the second is the melody of song is an effective or psychological resource. Besides being fun, songs to able to modify students as well as foster a positive attitude towards English. And the last third, the melody of song is cognitive research. Song help to memory, concentrations, and coordination. Students become more sensitive to rhythm as a tool to interpret meaning. And from that, melody of songs can make the class more interesting and lively. When children like the song of the, the teacher, they will happily and enthusiastically imitate it and try to understand the meaning of the songs. And that's why uh, when they are indirectly learning something from the songs, we really, the use melody of song is a learning aid media has been proven both theoretically and empirically as one of the effective techniques in improving the English competence of children. Melody of song is a great way to express authentic language. In addition, melody of song can bring enjoyment and therefore Teachers can live up the classroom as more prayer by stimulating children in study. In learning activities, songs can be used uh, to provide interesting repetition of language structures that tend to be boring, can practice giving the correct rhythm and strength vocabulary, and can be used to teach, to teach in groups or individual exercise. And the nature, nature of repetitions and rhythm in the market an ideal tool for language learning. So melody of song is an excellent tool to help children memorize the vocabulary. More especially, songs are believed to be able to modify children during English learning. It can also be said that melody of song is an important part of learning English because it makes children more sensitive to sounds, and learning a language is nothing but learning different types of meaningful sounds. And the next slide, please. Okay, here I give an example of uh, about the uh, melody of songs and the vocabulary about the greetings. Uh,
Good morning, selamat pagi. Good afternoon, selamat siang. Good evening, selamat malam. Goodbye, selamat tinggal. Good night, selamat tidur. What is your name? Siapa namamu? How are you? Apa kabarmu? I'm fine, jawabannya. Okay, here I made the song about greetings and I used the melody of uh, Balon to Adalima song. And from this, children will be interested in this and make it easier for them to know stick in their brains. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, a uh, conclusion. Okay. There are two conclusions. The first is vocabulary is all the words in a particular language that an individual knows or uses to communicate effectively. And the second is melody of song is an excellent tool to help children memorize the vocabulary. Melody of song can bring enjoyment and the poet teacher can live on the classroom atmosphere by stimulating children interest of it. Next slide, please. And here are the references that I used. Uh, I hope all participants can understand the matter I convey. Uh, I forgive me for the pronunciation error and other mistakes. I'm Nisa Saliha. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will give it back to my daughter. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It was a very interesting presentation about song. Who doesn't love song, right? Thank you very much for the explanation, Nisa. Now it's time for the sixth presenter, Fandi Santoso, who will carry out the presentation entitled Why Vocabulary is More Important Than Grammar and Pronunciation. Fandi, hello, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, are you ready to deliver your presentation? Uh, I hope so. Yeah, you're ready. All right, if you're ready, then please. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the moderator for giving me this opportunity to participate on this webinar. And first of all, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Pandi Santoso, and on this occasion, I would like to bring a presentation, uh, a present presentation topic about vocabulary. And to be more specific, I will bring a title: Why vocabulary is more important than a grammar and pronunciation. And for that, I will divide my explanation into three sessions. First is, wait a minute. Uh, the first is introduction, and the second is the main body. And the, the last is conclusion. Without wasting any more time, uh, I will begin the explanation. So for the introduction, before entering the core material, I will first uh, explain three things about vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. First is vocabulary. Uh, vocabulary is a set of familiar words within a person's language. Uh, Hoshino in 2010, stated that vocabulary is the basis of a language. Thus, uh, we can never underestimate the importance in learning a target language. As friends, in 1984, uh, page 100 explained, vocabulary knowledge in foreign language is a continuum between the ability to make sense of a word and the ability to activate the, autom uh, the word automatically for productive purposes. And about grammar, grammar is a rule of a language uh, of a language governing the sound, word, sentence, and other elements, as well as their combination and interpretation. Yaldis and Senal in 2017 stated that the effective use of a language is the effective use of a grammar, so that language users have to be efficient grammar user. They further added that if a language learner wants to reach this goal, she or he has to learn a grammar of a target language effectively. And in terms of pronunciation, pronunciation is a way in which a word or a language is spoken. Hammer in 2007 
identifies the importance of a pronunciation is not only make students aware of a different sound or some future, but uh, some fe uh, feature, but can also improve their speaking immeasurably. Ken Tabi in 2015 mentioned the importance of pronunciation is critical enough to merit far more serious attention from a second language teacher and researcher, as like as it is a key to intelligible speech and effective communication in globalized world. And next is body part. In this body part, uh, I will tell you about first, uh, why vocabulary is important. And the second, vocabulary is more important than a grammar. And the third is vocabulary is more important than a pronunciation. So let's start from the number one. Number one is why vocabulary is important. Of many compelling reasons for, for providing student in uh, for providing student with instruction to build vocabulary, none is more important than a contribution of vocabulary knowledge to read uh, uh, to reading comprehension. National panel in 2000 conclude that the comprehension development cannot be understood without a critical examination of the role played by vocabulary knowledge. Student. Uh, student, student success uh, in school and beyond depend in great measure upon their ability to read with a comprehension. There is an urgency to providing instruction that equips students with a skill and strategy necessarily for lifelong vocabulary development. One of the most persistent findings in, uh, in reading research is that the extent of a student's vocabulary knowledge relates strongly to their reading comprehension and overall academic success. The relationship seems logical. To get the meaning from what they read, students need both a great many words in their vocabularies and the ability to use various strategies to stabilize the meaning of a new word when they encounter them. And young students who don't have a large vocabulary or effective word learning strategy often struggle to achieve a comprehension. Number two is vocabulary is more important than a grammar. In one of a journal study reviewed by Alan Simon and Miriam Driveners from the University of Ghent, they conduct a research on a several English language student and the result is an explain, explanation that two triplets of a question inquire after frequency with, with which the learner had encountered communication breakdown because of error in a specific language component. According to the participant, vocabulary error are more likely to lead a communication breakdown than a grammatical error. And number three is vocabulary is more important than a pronunciation. In some cases, when we talk about vocabulary, there is a connection, as we know, pronunciation is a way of pronouncing a vocabulary in English. And pronunciation is directly related to speaking. But basically, vocabulary holds ever more important because teaching word is an important aspect in language learning as a language, lear a language is a base on word, Thornbury 2002. It is almost impossible to learn a language without word. Even communication between human is based on word. Both teacher and student agree that vocabulary mastery is a major factor in language teaching, Walters 2005. And in conclusion, from this, we can conduct that vocabulary, uh, we can conclude that vocabulary plays the, the uppermost role than a grammar and pronunciation and, and pronunciation by knowing some expert opinion. And it is also explained that vocabulary is an important part of teaching and learning English because without sufficient, uh, without sufficient vocabulary student cannot be un understand other people or communicate their own ideas. Uh, it has been repeatedly under understood that learning many words is useful for a writer and speaker. And in fact, uh, in fact, uh, is that everyone benefits from it in both personally and professionally. Substantially, developing a great vocabulary is one of the least noticed way to improve our life. There is a relationship between English vocabulary and its teaching to students in terms of learning English as a second language. I think that's all. This is my reference that I use. 
uh, I hope you can understand what I can uh, what I have been explained. Uh, thank you, and I will give it back to the moderator. All right, thanks a lot for sharing your insights, Fandi. Thanks a lot for sharing your insights, Fandi. Now let's move to the seventh presenter. Nita Rusmiati will deliver a presentation entitled Increasing Senior High School Students' Vocabulary by Watching Movies. Nita, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. If you're ready, then you're, uh, you, you may start your presentation, please. <laughs> Do you see my screen? Yes, I can. All right. Thanks, moderator, for hosting the meeting. And Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you. Thank you to the Honorable Miss Arini as my lecture. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending this session. And let me introduce myself. My name is Nita Rusmiati. And today, in this occasion, I would like to bring a topic about increasing senior high school students' vocabulary by watching movies. And my presentation will be divided into four parts. Firstly, I will explain about definition of vocabulary, uh, why vocabulary is important, and definition of movies. Second is about advantages of using movies. The third is tips to learn English with movie, and last is the conclusion. Okay, well, let's begin. Uh, for introduction, I will explain about this. According to Gus Henda 2017, implementing English movie in teaching English as a foreign language to senior high school students can also improve students' vocabulary. Students not only get fun learning environment, but they also get new vocabulary from the movie they watch. Okay, before we discuss to the core topic, of course, we must first know uh, the definition and then according to Norman and Drawyer 2011 said that vocabulary can be defined as the word someone must know to communicate uh, effectively that is word in speaking or expressive vocabulary and words in listening or recited vocabulary. So, vocabulary is the collection of words that an individual knows. And next, uh, okay, before I explain, uh, for that, anybody know why is vocabulary important? Uh, okay, this one aspect of language that must be learned is vocabulary. According to Lawson and Hogben 1996, say that learning vocabulary is important because before we can speak, uh, write, or listen, in, listen effectively, we have to learn vocabulary first. When someone recognizes uh, the meaning of a word, when they see it, they are said to know it. This means uh, that in order to learn vocabulary, we must first understand and be able to use in the context of a sentence. So uh, vocabulary is a rep representative group of English word. And this is the definition of movies, which I think seem like we already know what is the movie. And according to Mr. Ray Bigger, 2009, the movie is a media in the form of a video that is initiated or produced in a real idea. Then in it must support elements of entertainment and meaning. This element of entertainment and meanings lies in the condition of filmmaking, which can be sometimes be in the form of comedy or in the form of history. Okay, next slide. Uh, this slide is about advantages of using movies. Using English movie can be an attractive strategy to teach English as foreign language to senior high school students. It can be used to teach a uh, vocabulary to students. In the application, there are some other benefits or advantages in the into the guide, and they are the firstly is students can learn how to pronounce the word appropriately because English movie present more natural language since the speaker in the movie are native speaker. 
Second, English movie provides students a lot of context which can help them to learn how to use such as expression appropriately and the contextually. And the third is, fun learning environment gives the motivation to learn English as foreign language. And the last is, uh, students can also learn English culture. While watching English movie, uh, students can see cultural aspect included in the plot to illustrate social custom and also students get message from the movies they watch. So these are some of advantages of using movies. Move to the next slide. Uh, okay, well, here I will explain about how tips to learn English with movies, especially yes, for senior high school. Firstly, we should choose an interesting movie because if we choose a boring movie, students will be bored and if bored, it will be, it will be uh, difficult to pay attention for more than one and a half hours. And second, uh, we should select a movie that matches students' current English level. For example, uh, for beginner in English, I think I recommend that you learn English through animation because I think the English is usually very friendly, nice, and easy to understand. The third tips is order students to bring in of dictionary. The goal is to find out the meaning of unfamiliar words so they, uh, they uh, will be easy to remember. The part is repeat short phrases. Uh, sometimes you or your student might hear something cool in the movie. For example, some short phrases or slang like sorting or your backup that are commonly used in English. If, if you are or your student like how it sounds, uh, like it's helped to repeat it. After saying it uh, out loud a while, students will be able to remember it for a longer time. And the fifth tips is which movie can be with English subtitle or without subtitle. This is done so that we try to understand uh, the movie and get new vocabulary, of course. And the last tips to learn English using with movie, that is, while the teacher saw the movie, students should take notes for the word that unfamiliar for them. Then after the movie is over, they should search the word in the dictionary. And then maybe these are some tips that I can be confided. And I'm sure I think there are so many, there are many other tips. It just that we have to be diligent in, find, in finding out. And next, yeah, this is the conclusion. That is, movie is one of audiovisual media that can be used by English teachers to improve student in English skill. There are some advantage, advantages of using English movie in English teaching, such as movie can keep students' interest in learning English, and movie can improve students' vocabulary. Moreover, using English movie to teach English is fun, and everyone loves watching. Using English movie to teach English is fun and everyone loves watching, I think. Uh, strengths the teacher, confidence to use English movie as an attractive strategy to teach English as foreign language to senior high school students. And here is a cute quote for today from Orson Welles. If you want a happy ending, that depends, of course, on where you stop your story. Okay, and here are the references, and I think that's enough from my presentation. Uh, I'm so sorry for all my mistakes. Thank you for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will give Waalaikumsalam you warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All right, thank you very much, Nita. It will be very useful for students who like to watch movies, right? All right, it's time for the eighth uh, presenter or the last presenter for today. Salma Samrotul will deliver the presentation entitled Improving Junior High School Vocabulary to, Through Duolingo Application. Salma, are you ready? Yes. 
All right, if you're ready, you may start your presentation, please. All right, you may start your presentation, please. All right. <clears throat> Thanks moderator for hosting the meeting. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending this webinar series. My name is Alma Samrato Habibah. And today I'd like to bring a topic about vocabulary with the title Improving Junior High School Students' Vocabulary Through Duolingo Application. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so my presentation today will be divided into four parts. First, definition of Duolingo and vocabulary. Second is implementation of using Duolingo in EFL classroom. Third, the effect on students' vocabulary. And fourth is conclusion. <clears throat> All right, before uh, I start the presentation, have you ever heard about uh, Duolingo application? Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah, I'm sure uh, all the participants already know about this application because this application is really popular. So Duolingo is uh, an English teaching learning media which is able to assist the students in learning English which is uh, more enjoyable because it is such a game based. Duolingo is provide vocabulary practice and give an opportunities for students to evaluate their knowledge and uh, identify uh, the need to continue improving the vocabulary. It means Duolingo as presented as educational tools in the classroom. And what's about vocabulary? According to to uh, Jack C. Ricard, 2001, one of the most obvious components of language and one of the first thing apply linguists turn their attention. So vocabulary will be defined all the words in a particular language and can help someone to understand uh, in communication. This is very important because vocabulary is a key which uh, the students can understand all about English. Next slide, please. And how to implementation of using Duolingo in teaching EFL students. Uh, as said by Paul Magnusson, uh, there are some implementation of using Duolingo application in teaching EFL students. First, during the class, the teacher provides time for the students to work by individually at least 15% uh, uh, of class time and then uh, the rest of the time is used for the students to work in a team or groups and at the same time the teacher can also do a review and give uh, some feedback to the students and the next is as a homework uh, it's important to continue the uh, progress of using Duolingo uh, it outside the classroom, but the problem is students tend to have less attention because they thought they already use the application in the classroom, so they would rather not to use it. However, the teacher's duty uh, to maximize the use of Duolingo as a homework, and it can be giving them an actual physical reward, prolong the assignment deadline, and so on. Next slide, please. Okay, does using Duolingo give an effect on students' vocal vocabulary? Yeah, Duolingo helps students to increase their motivation and make this application more enjoyable. According to Chen and Game Law 2019, uh, that game-based learning which provide in Duolingo features for language learning, especially in vocabulary improvement by the application can encourage and maintain uh, the student's motivation to achieve a good result. And Duolingo can help students to easily gain new words because the students can directly see interesting pictures and a uh, wider range of words while they are learning vocabulary. And students can also use Duolingo application to understand the meaning of the world. Next slide, please. 
We can conclude Duolingo is one of the English language teaching media that can improve the vocabulary of junior high school students. Clark 2013, who states the te that technology can increase the effectiveness of vocabulary teaching efforts, as we know that the students in junior high school really like to explore fun things, and Duolingo is the one of the most appropriate media because besides being fun, it also helps them to know more vocabulary. Next slide, please. And why a Duolingo application can improve their vocabulary? Because Nettie Silver said that by playing games, you can artificially speed up your learning curve to develop the right kind of the thought process. So based on it, Duolingo can be a media for students to improve their vocabulary. That's all for me. Thank you for your good attention. And I will give it back to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Salma. Another insightful presentation. All right, thank you for the nice presentation, dear all presenters. That was the last presenter for today's session. Now we move to the Q&A session. Uh, there, there is no question in the chat box. So if you wish to ask a question, please raise your hand and you can deliver your question directly to the presenters, please. Is there any question, please, from the participants? All right. There is a question here from Dini Novianti uh, for Nita Rusmiati. Be ready, Nita. Would you please recommend one lit one title of interesting movie that can be used in teaching senior high school students along with the reason. Thanks. All right, Nita, whenever you're ready, please. Okay, well, uh, wait a moment. <laughs> One's movie, the example of movie, I think, uh, I think Harry Potter, because uh, good for education for senior high school. And then most importantly, use movie that are interesting and easy to understand for our students. Thank you, maybe that. All right, thank you very much, Nita. Hope the answer is enough for Dini. And then there is another, oh, other questions. That, there are two other questions. First, from uh, the second question is from Amelia Sri Sudrajat. To Nita again, <laughs> if you previously explained the advantages, what are the uh, the, the, uh, I'm sorry, disadvantages of using movies to teach in the classroom. Please, Nita. Wait a moment yet. All right. Uh, if another uh, other presenters want to help, you are pleased to answer the question still beside Anita. Okay, uh, I will try to answer. <laughs> this advantage of using movies. 
I think, yes, besides giving some benefits or advantages, the implementation of English movie in teaching English foreign language, the student also give some disadvantages. And I think the disadvantage firstly is while the movie is playing, uh, students try to understand word by word instead uh, of the mind fine of the movie. I think the student this may frustrate the students uh, there and therefore before playing the movie, the teacher, I think the teacher should explain clearly what the student have to do. Just student can enjoy watching and the movie and then also student can learning English at the same time. Uh, other disadvantage, if the movie takes too much time to play, it is possible that student will be get bored. To, an, to anticipate that, the teacher should be cons uh, consider the length of the movie to watch or break the movie into several segments. The next disadvantage, I think English movie can be American or British movie to give students different varieties of English. Now, the different phrases and so different pronunciation and vocabulary. That's the different make, um, they can make the students confused. So because of that, before or after watching the movie, I think good before teacher can explain or lead a class discussion about the English variety used in the movie such as watching this movie and this is the part of British movies like that. And last, I think this advantage of using movie is the limited facilities in the school. This is also, or can also pose an obstacle in teaching EFL using movies. I think that's enough. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Nita, for explaining about the disadvantages. And we move to the last uh, question from Raihani. The question is for Salma. Is Duolingo accessible for every student, which is there is no problem with that application? Thank you. Salma, whenever you're ready, please. Okay, thank you, moderator. Uh, I think yes, because Duolingo is easy, accessible by anyone. And but one uh, the disadvantages in this application is uh, they uh, cannot be accessed when there is no internet. I think that's my answer. All right, thank you very much, Salma, for answering the question, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It was the last question uh, for today's uh, session. And before we leave this room, let's take picture first. Please activate your camera if you haven't and give your best pose to the camera. All right, I'm still waiting for those who are still trying to open the camera, please. All right, I'm going to count from one to three uh, from the first slide. All right, be ready. One, two, three. All right, good. Once again, for the first slide. One, two, three. All right, thank you. For the second slide, please be ready. One, two, three. All right, thank you very much. Uh, 
Or I'm sorry, I had device trouble. Thank you. 